Cory Worsted is one of my favorite yarns that I've been knitting a lot with this year because it's really quick to knit with. It's a worsted weight yarn and it's really soft, but it has that wooly, sheepy feeling. So if you really, really like those cozy garments that have a lot of structure and oomph, that sheepy oomph to them, then you're gonna wanna try knitting with this yarn and it just comes in the most beautiful color palette. So no matter what colors you choose, it all goes together because they're all heathered and they have that shadowy heathered dimensionality in the yarn fibers. So every single color that Amy dyes on these yarns is on a gray heathered base. So even the bright red saturated colors, you might see a fiery red in one of Amy's superwash bases, but when it's dyed in Cory Worsted, it takes on that shadowy sophisticated depth. And I just love yeah, the texture that it gives. It's really great for cables, really good stitch definition. So in this video, I wanna show you some of the shawls that I've knit and designed with this yarn. And we can take a look at some colors and that yarn up close and give you some inspiration to knit with Cory Worsted. Does that sound good? So let's take a look. This is the Knit Provisation Shawl. And I designed this worsted weight shawl for Amy's book, Worsted, uh, published by Lina and it's filled with a lot of beautiful garments and accessories using Cory Worsted. So every project in here is not too long to knit because that worsted weight gauge is just really gratifying. It grows so quickly and all the colors in Amy's palette have that heathered quality to them. So that's what I love about the heathered yarns is they blend and become really harmonious together. So you don't have to fuss too much about, ooh, do these colors look good together? They all share that shadowy commonality. So it's really fun to do color work. So I designed this knit provisation shawl for the book and it's done with cables and twisted stitches and it's always changing as you knit top down. And when I designed this shawl, I didn't know exactly where it was going. I knew I wanted to work with cables, so I played with this growing, this crescendo twisted cable and then I just made up the rest of the stitch patterns as I went, and I call that knit provising. And then Amy named this shawl knit provisation, and I'm like, that's perfect. This is what this shawl is all about. It's playful and fun, and you're making up new textures and changing directions as you go. And if you want to knit this shawl, it's done with five skeins of Cory Worsted and one skein of each color. This blue shawl was knit with Hegelia, French Gray, that light gray. Winterfell is the dark, darkest blue. Amege is a lighter, but still quite saturated blue. And Mist is that beautiful blue tinted gray. This Mist is one of my favorite colors because it goes with everything, but it leans into that blue tone. So five skeins, one skein of each color will make this knit provisation, and it's quite quick to knit. Um, you're going to have some leftovers of some of the colors, but it's a good medium to large size shawl and really cozy with that worsted weight gauge. All right, here's a new shawl pattern that I designed especially for Cory Worsted. And I've been really busy this last year making lots of videos and lots of new projects, and I needed a little design break. And by that, I mean I still needed to design something, but I needed it to be simple, okay? Sometimes choosing 10 colors for a project is really stressful. So this was my de-stress project, just one color, designing from top to the border, and all you need to do is pick one color, five skeins of yarn, makes a really large schlenket, and that attached border gives this really fun texture that echoes the corrugated bands in the body of the shawl. So this is called corrugation shawl. Five skeins of any color. You work top down and it's as easy as it gets. You just work stockinette stitch, some reverse stockinette stitch. There's really easy make one increases. And there's a little cast on tutorial in the pattern that shows you how to work the I-cord tab. And when you do the border, you're knitting it sideways. So you attach the border while you knit in that beautiful color. I could imagine if you're wanting to spice it up and doing a contrast accent, you could do a color A, color B, color A, color B for the border. That could be a really nice striped option, but really fun, really simple, and really beginner friendly for the corrugation shawl. Another beginner friendly semicircle is this Dustland shawl, and this is knit with four skeins of Cory Worsted, and this is the Yellow Brick Road colorway. So not too difficult to knit, 
you have to focus a little bit more than that blue corrugation shawl. And the Dustlin shawl has simple moss stitch, diagonal rib, and a little bit of a broken rib texture, and a lot of garter stitch breaks. So you focus a little bit on those knit pearl textures, really, really easy, and then you get to do nothing but knit for those garter stitch breaks between the stitch patterns. And like most of my shawls, finish it with an I-cord bind off, and it is just so crisp, so clean. Pick your favorite color, four skeins, for that Dustland shawl. All right, we're in the shawl mood today. So if you like texture and color together in the same project, it doesn't get much more fun than Pierre because it's constantly changing with some triangles and eyelets. And while you're doing the textures, you're also fading colors together. This was done in four shades of Cory Worsted, starting with High Garden, a really light frosty pink. Floral Morganite was the second color that I striped High Garden together with Floral Morganite. Dawn is the third color, that blush pink. And Lisa is the final color, a super saturated, flashy fuchsia for that border. Four skeins of yarn will make the Pierre and just one skein of each color. And after this shawl was finished, there was a lot of leftover yarn. So you're gonna have some leftovers for a hat. I might need to do a Pierre hat or something. That would be really fun with these textures. But four skeins of yarn, one skein each, really quick and easy for the Pierre shawl. If small projects are a little more your speed, then this new triangle topper hat is really quick and easy and plays with that triangle texture. And if you wanna do this hat just in one color, you only need one skein of yarn, okay? One skein of Cory Worsted will knit this entire hat, but if you want a little color pop like I did for these samples, you can do the lining of the brim in a contrast color. So one skein of yarn is enough yardage to knit the whole hat, but if you do the brim in a different color, these will be your leftover yarn amounts. So there's plenty of yarn left over, but I love that contrasting brim because it just peeks through a tiny bit on the brim. And if you wear the hat with the brim folded up, it's extra warm and you get more of that color pop peeking through. So this hat is just knit in the round, but after you knit the full hat, you knit it in the round, it's really, really long. And then you just fold under the brim and you just do a little whip stitch to secure the cast on to the inside of the hat. And that gives you this double thick lining layer. But really easy, it's just that final whip stitch at the end that gives you that double thick brim. And when you wear it around your ears, it's really double thick and warm as a slouchy style hat. But when you fold it up, here we go. It could be a little more of a beanie style or like a watch cap and you see more of that contrast color. So this light gray hat was done in the French gray colorway as that main color, and Payne's gray for the contrast color. And the orange hat was done with rust as the main color, and Kitsune, this really beautiful, earthy, it's like red soil, a gorgeous burgundy, it leans into the burgundy range, that kind of rusty red. But I just love those warm tones together. I might have to do a project someday with that rust, Kitsune, and Yellow Brick Road in like autumn, an autumn shawl or sweater. Whew, okay, getting distracted, but yeah. That's why I knit. I just knit to finish a project so that I can cast on another one. One thing you're gonna notice about these hats, this triangle topper, is they look a little different because this one was just washed a little bit more. So this one I only lightly soaked in water, but this one was washed more and it got ever so slightly felted, but uh, it gave that really woolly bloom to the fabric. So if you really give it a scrub-a-dub-dub in the water with a little wool wash, you can really exaggerate the fluffy, sheepy quality in this yarn. But if you just soak it a little bit, it's not quite as fluffy, but it still fills out the stitches nicely and has that beautiful woolly warmth. This final sample is one of my favorite West Knits patterns of all time because it's easy in garter stitch, but it's so fascinating how it's constructed. It's the Vertices Unite Shawl knit in one section at a time. And as you knit each section, you pick up stitches or you attach stitches to previous sections. So it's completely seamless with easy garter stitch. And you're just gonna be so impressed with yourself when you finish this shawl and being like, what? 
I made all those fun geometric sections and it fits together so perfectly. The Vertices Unite was originally designed for fingering weight yarn, but you can get a really good size shawl if you knit the small size with worsted weight yarn. So these were all my leftovers. I used one skein of each color for Cory Worsted, and you're gonna have all these leftovers in a large size shawl, but uh, follow the small size instructions, okay? The small size of Vertices Unite is really, really small, but when you knit it with a bigger yarn like Cory Worsted, you get this really nice size, and it just goes so quick to knit. So these colors that I used, I have them in order from A to E, starting with Hegelia, the light blue, Winterfell, the dark blue, Stone, a medium gray, Quartz Fume is a purple toned gray. It's this beautiful lavender tint to this blue, uh, gray tone. So Hegelia, Winterfell, Stone, Quartz Fume, and Cocoa. I think this is my favorite color. Lime in a heathered woolly yarn. I mean, it doesn't get much better than that. I wish sheep really were like this in the fields, but that's what Amy dyes colors for. She brings the fantasy colors of sheep to life. So five skeins, one skein each. You're gonna have a lot of leftovers. And the most important color I think to consider is color E is a good starting point. Color E is the only color used on its own. All of the other colors stripe and dance and mix together. So if you have a favorite color or a statement color, use that as color E. And you're gonna see it in this big center section. And colors A and B play in the first section. Colors C and D play in that second section. So you have one, two, three, and then the colors dance around in different ways. You get to see this color on its own, color D on its own, and then these two colors play together, and you get to see this color on its own. So it's really fun as the colors dance around and follow the pattern as written for colors A, B, C, D, E. But if you wanna shake it up, and instead of putting that color there, you wanna put that color there, it's totally fine to mix it up and make it your own. But I tell you what to do for every section, and just one skein is all you need. And you could do a beautiful hat or a cowl with all your leftover Cory Worsted yarns too. Vertices Unite in the small size. If you liked any of those projects, I linked them all down below. So you can download any of those shawls or the Dustlin sweater or my new triangle topper hat um, using just one or two skeins of yarn. So download those on Ravelry or Gumroad. And if you want to try Cory Worsted, we are all stocked up at stephenandpenelope.com and we'll ship these puppies out wherever you are in the world and you can squish it and it has that sheepy smell too. So yeah, I wish you could touch and smell this yarn through the screen. It's just so lovely and so much love and passion went into creating this yarn. So thank you, Amy, for making a new favorite yarn. You'll definitely see a lot more patterns with this in the future. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.